So guys, let's talk about the new project. This huge box contains the S300 PMU SA10 Grumble. What is it? It's a really big truck with these really big tubes on the back. Um, call it a rocket launcher. Really, this is an air defense system. If you check out my previous video, I did the 172 scale model collect Grumble diorama. And uh, this wouldn't be my usual subject, but since I've been in Indonesia, I've been struggling. Uh, mainly because I've been doing these 72 scale kits, I've been unable to paint, unable to do any weathering, so the content has been uh, poor and it's been absent as well. So we're going to do a full build, we'll do a review on this kit right now, we'll do a full build showing you how it all goes together. And um, the scale of it, obviously it's a very impressive uh, vehicle, a very impressive kit. Uh, purchased it in St. Petersburg, if you have a look at my other video about St. Petersburg model shops. But let's just have a look at this kit. Uh, I think it was released in 2018, maybe 2017, 135th scale, some nice box art. It's showing the S300 here, the Grumble, with this Maz chassis vehicle. Uh, over here is the flap lid. This damage was from transportation. Uh, I had to transport this um, in, in, uh, in the hold baggage of an aircraft, but nothing got damaged. Okay, so looking at the box, got the 3D layouts of the model with some detailed components, etc. There's a little bit about what the S300 is. You can have a look at that yourselves. We don't know what sort of cooperation Trump Matia had with this, um, with the manufacturer, but um, we expect it to be, you know, it, is, it does look like it's gonna be a very detailed kit. Here's some of the contents with some photo etch, die cut mask to, cut, to cover the transparencies, decals, and then it's uh, some hero parts here. Here are the schemes. They look really interesting, to be honest. I mean, this is, despite its size and appearance, it's not really that interesting a vehicle because um, it doesn't have, it's not a point to point sort of weapon. This is a long range air defense system. But look at these schemes, they look quite exciting. We don't know what the val validity of them is. I'd say that this one is, is probably the most accurate, this, this one that shows this uh, Mayday Parade vehicle but also of course it's it's the most boring these camoed ones look really interesting so we'll probably uh, venturing towards that uh, price was very reasonable 6200 rubles basically 25 percent lesser than the prices i've seen in the uk i don't know um, how that equates to the us but it was such a bargain and also i wanted a large project so let's have a look inside the box and go through the contents and tell you how this build's gonna go. Okay, let's lift up the box and see what's inside. I've already had a sneak peek, of course I've had to. Okay, so straight away, typical Trumpeteer, you get the their sort of uh, marketing brochure on this uh, SA10 Grumble, um, showing you some of the features uh, it's going to show you how it's going to enhance the detail and also it's showing uh, the two methods in two uh, options for posing the vehicle one is in the uh, transport configuration with the tubes down and this is uh, pre-launch configuration obviously with the uh, transport erector launcher in the uh, launch position which is straight upwards for this type of, um, of missile system on the other side you've got complementary kits which at the same time came out was this uh, this Patriot SAM system so you've got the American and, and the Russian uh, equivalent you get a big fold out color scheme you've got two highlighted uh, vehicles there uh, there's no indication of unit type um, Basically, there'll be um, Russian Air Force, or I think these these are particularly these are Air Force vehicles, but or Defense Forces. It doesn't tell you anything about the units. And then there's these pretty interesting schemes on here. They're highlighting the registration plate markings. So I'm assuming there's some accuracy around them. Paint callouts are by Mr. Hobby. Vallejo, Model Master, Tamaya and Hombrel. Obviously there's, some of them are missing, but uh, you can find alternatives, etc. 
let's have a look at the uh, instructions. First of all, we've got the sprue layout. There's quite a lot of sprues, obviously, in this vehicle. Uh, there's the box does tell us there's over 1,080 parts. May or may not include the PE sprues. And uh, construction starts with this Maz chassis, which is like a ladder rack chassis with all the transmission components going in. And that continues right up to stage four where the engine is built. See, I've got a full engine inside here. Chassis con components, drivetrain components continue to be mounted. And again, And again, now we're up to the uh, outrigger suspension, hydraulic uh, outriggers being placed on. There might be an option on how those are posed, either in the um, launch or transport configuration. And then, up, so everything up to stage 11 is, now we start to commence the cab. The cab is built uh, traditional style, so multiple components. Tires going on 12. More of the cab, more of the cab. Window masks for the glazing, that really makes the job easy for us. Nice PE detail here for the beacon. And then uh, as we go forward, this is the uh, command and control part of the grumble. So the operators sit inside here to uh, launch or to communicate with the command systems of the air defense. More details on that control cabin, and then these are sort of ancillary, uh, I think the generators and cables and controls that link to the missile system. Stage 24, we're on the flatbed, so this is the erector launcher component, and all of this is the erector launcher, so it's, I can remember, in particular on the model collect, this was a bit of a struggle. I uh, expect it to be considerably better in this scale and with the amount of components. Up to stage 30, still working on the bed. Uh, 32 is the launch tubes. There is no missile included whatsoever, but you have got the optional end caps. And then by 33, it's the final assembly stages. So basically the main component, the cab's already on, then the, the control unit, the ancillary um, cabling control units for the missiles, and then the launch tubes themselves. And there we are. Notice that they only show this uh, at stage 35 in the transport configuration, but I assume that there should be instructions to tell us how to show this in the erection sequence. I think it's here to show us the option between erection and launch, but when we come to it, we'll, we'll discover that. So let's have a look at the parts. Not gonna go into a great deal of depth here. Don't really need to. Uh, standard Trump tier, individually bagged sprues, which is also a great thing. Uh, detail levels, always reasonable on Trump tier. It's not super duper, but it's always reasonable. They've always got uh, good parts. So I'll get some close-ups and show you that as, as we do as we build it. Here's the cab outline, uh, steering wheel, etc. This is the um, erection support mechanism. More ancillary details. More ancillary details. Quite a large sprue of um, the larger components for the cab. On this side of the box, this is the main chassis wheel. So, so you get an idea of the dimensions of the vehicle straight from that part there. So that's like the sort of size of vehicle that we're looking at once it's completed. Obviously there's a bit of an overhang for the missile tubes and at the front as well, the cab hangs over the front of this. Uh, the main thing of course is that these parts are straight and true. So I don't see that there's any problem at all with these. They look straight and true to me. So we don't anticipate any problems. Details of the um, launch tubes and other details on there. That's a repeat sprue. 
cab doors. This is part of the, I think this is the cab uh, floor. Also, I'll just point out there, it's actually got some ribbing to give it some reinforcement and depth to it. These are all uh, suspension components. And that's a repeat sprue. So this is what I call the hero box. You always know you've got a, you know, something a little bit special when you get a box in a box. So this should have the hero parts. And let's see what's inside here. Okay, so we've got the big one part called slide molded. Command and control cab. Just one part, there's no interior for this. I should have pointed that out in the instructions. Got some great detail there on the louvers. The doors, everything looks really pretty well molded. Um, no other comments on that. All the tires, and of course there's eight of them on these vehicles, um, are rubber, not vinyl. They're actually sort of like a rubber material. You can get resin probably, I haven't really looked in it. I will not be using resin, I'll be using these rubber tires. I'm gonna build this out of the box. There's no need to supplement it with anything. Um, big chunky tires, good tread, etc. We'll look at them in detail as we construct it. Here's another hero part. Again, we've got the, um, the frame that holds the, trans the uh, erector launcher. So one part, it's actually even got the mud guards molded on there. Really great detail on that. Uh, individually bagged details, nothing special there. Here's the real, this is something that I, I, I knew about before and it's just awesome as well. This is um, like probably the, a really, really good use of slide molding is on these. These of course are the launcher tubes and as you can see, they are totally formed up so there's no need are all to glue parts together. However, there is a mold seam here. Right down where the molds join, you've got a seam here, but all that's going to require is just a little light sand. All these um, ejection pin marks come off of it. There's no flash on them. These are perfect. Totally hollow, lightweight. This is this is the you know really where you want to see slide molding. Some of there saves so much work and effort. Of course I've got four of them, so those are the tubes there. Transparent parts here, not too many of course, it's got a very small cab this vehicle. And then we've got the sheets of photo etch, some really fine stuff. We'll find out where all that goes as we work through it. Um, I think the parts that would be most interesting, these light guards and you know the details that you want in photo etch are probably in photo etch. There we have the uh, deco sheet. I'm not going to even open that. I'll show you that later on. This is the window masks, which are die cut, so you just paste them on and it'll save you a job. Yeah, here's the third piece of um, photo etch. Uh, this is the detail that we like a lot, which is the beacon um, guard, the grill that surrounds the beacon. It'd be interesting to see how that forms up. Little individual nuts and bolts. We'll see if we're gonna put them all on. Tend to be difficult to see. There's one piece of wire, I'm not too sure where that goes. And then finally, some poly caps for the wheel. So let's, um, let's get going. My intention is to um, you know update every week and show you how the build goes. To be honest, even though it's a big kit, it will not be difficult. It will not be difficult. It's nothing um, you know that I would say an intermediate modeler would not be able to handle. So uh, let's crack on. <laughs> 